はい、おはよう、みんなちゃん。あたしたち、星空グランピーです。チーム TYC もニューホストだ。さて、私たちのビッグビッグニュース、よろしくお願いします。ジーズ様だー<coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, it's Gloppy from Team TYC here, and we're gonna be talking about the thing everybody else is talking about. Really? What else did you expect? We're talking about the Geese reveals! Which, oh boy, this video is gonna be controversial. I'm gonna try and keep this short, so without further ado, let's just hop into what's going on. So, The other day, they revealed the contents of the Geese pack. And by the contents, I mean the one card we all really care about. And it's Geese. But not just Geese, it's Geese the starter and Geese the grade four. And oh my god, this is something that they've never done before. But I'm definitely shooketh. So let's go over what it does. First, let's talk about the grade zero Neon Geese. Neon Geese is a grade zero, 5,000 power base, 10,000 shield, and it's a Kray elemental. And it has four different skills. The first skill is very, very different from Forerunner, but it works the same way. When this unit is ridden, put this card into your G zone, and it goes there face up. However, that does not make GB1 skills live. Under that is a continuous skill. When it's in the G zone, the power increase from your trigger effect changes from. You know, giving power to choose up to one Xeroth Dragon from your G zone and bind it face up. So you don't get the power that, you know, plus 5k, which will make your attacks easier to guard because you're not going to be passing. However, this is this is your win con. The second skill is also a continuous ability that activates in the G zone. Your Xeroth Dragons in the bind zone cannot be moved to another location. Granted, this is also giving a lot of power to Narutami, but you know, we're not gonna. Shh, shh, we're not gonna talk about that. And then finally, Ultimate Stride, which works very, very differently from the other Ultimate Stride abilities. We've got Dragon Deity of Destruction Geese. Released when your Vanguard is grade 3 and the number of different Xeroth Dragon in your bind zone is 5. Notice a few things missing? It doesn't say when you and your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or greater. It's just. When your Vanguard is grade 3. So if your opponent's trying to play the grade 2 game, you can just say fuck all of that. Keep checking triggers until you get 5 Xeroth Dragons in your buying zone. And then, you know, do the whole. For the cost of the same card as my Vanguard, I put my whole future on the line, devour my future, and manifest. She and no Xeroth Dragon Zoa. Except in this case, instead of Zoa, it's Geese. But this is where it gets interesting. Choose a card. With the same card name as your Vanguard and discard it. Remove all cards on your other circles in your Soul and G Zone. Return this card face down and stride it onto your VC. Notice how that says everything. Literally dead ass everything. All cards on all circles. This returns locked cards. It also takes out your Vanguard and your Soul. So you can't use a stride skill and Geese doesn't have a heart, which we're gonna come back to later. But notice how we're on Neon Geese still. And it says return this card face down. That's because. Geese is a double sided card! Bwam, bwam, bwam. This, I can safely say, is the one thing nobody was expecting. Everybody else was like, oh yeah, Geese stays on the Vanguard circle, Geese is a Kray elemental, blah, 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 blah. Nobody. Nobody was sitting here like, mm hmm. Yeah, it'll be a double sided card. Which, good fucking move on Bushy's part for being like creative. Like that's. Wait a minute, what the fuck? How are you gonna sleeve this? I just realized this. You're gonna have to like take it out of the sleeve. What? Nani? Atteru no? But, enough speculating. We'll have time for that later. Dragon Deity of Destruction Geese. A grade four, no shield value, of course. It's a 30k base with no plus. Because you don't have a heart card. You don't have any cards on the field. And its skills are as follows it's got three trace skills. First skill is an auto. When this unit is placed on VC, choose five Xeroth dragons from your bind zone and call them to separate RC. So you're calling five Xeroth dragons, and you know, they don't have boost or intercept. But they're, they're doing that for a reason. That's on purpose. Because its next skill. Continuous Vanguard Circle. You cannot ride or call rear guards other than Xeroth Dragons. 
All of your units do not return to your G zone and are unaffected by any influence other than this card and your guardians. Your rear guards cannot be attacked. Let me just clarify this because there's a lot of confusion surrounding it. None of your units can be retired. None of your units can have their power increased or decreased. None of your units can... be locked. If they can't be locked, your units can't be retired, etc, etc, etc. So, Drachma doesn't do anything. Dust doesn't do anything. Drachma does still force you to discard. That still happens. But, Drachma doesn't retire. Dust can't decrease greater power. Oh, and you can't do burn damage. That's it. Dust can't burn damage. Neither can the Purge. However, cards like Silent Tom will still go off because it's only protecting your units, not you as a fighter. How and also, it doesn't give the Xerox Dragons resist. So they can still be chosen by card effects. They can't, like, you know, you can't really do anything to them. But, like, let's say by Balam's skill, you can still pick a Xerox Dragon and then get that 25k. You just won't retire it. And then last skill is... Auto Vanguard Circle. At the beginning of your turn, deal one damage to your opponent's Vanguard for each Xeroth Dragon on your rearguard circles. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You see? You see? This is what everybody's talking about. This is what everyone's losing their minds over, because this is an auto win condition. Unless... Unless you've been hit with Obturandus, Gridora, or Chaos... Yeah, Deluge. You... Or Close, in this case. You dead ass are fucked. Because that's going to be 5 damage. But I'll get into the interaction with Octorandus and all that later. For now, that's all 3 of Giza's skills. What the fuck, Bushy? What the fuck? <laughs> I get it, it's the end of an era, but what the fuck? <laughs> so let's get into the specifics of how Neon Giza and Grade 4 Giza work. So first, because I know there's going to be so many people who think they're so smart in the comments, being like, um, you can just use a transparent sleeve. No, you can't, because Neon Geese is a part of the main deck, so his sleeves have to match your deck, and you're not allowed to use transparent sleeves. So, you can't see me, but I just did the up yours gesture. Anyway, anyway, now we're gonna move on to like the interactions. Like, for example, Geese, Neon Geese, when it's in the G zone, does not count towards your generation break count. However, since it is a face-up card in the G-Zone, it will still count towards that. For example, a Bound to One Gills Derise skill, which is if the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is two or more, this unit gets critical plus one until end of turn. Gee still counts for that. However, 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 it's not, like, you're not putting your GB1 skills live. It was, god, fuck, oh my god, I would be running that in Harry so instantly. Next, triggers. With Neon Geese's effect, your triggers change. So the plus 5,000, you're not getting that power anymore. However, the effects such as criticals, you know, drawing, standing, and heals, all still happen. You're just, instead of that 5,000 power, you bind a Xeroth Dragon from your G-Zone. And if you don't have any Xeroth Dragons to bind, I guess nothing happens. However, there is an interesting change in that since Geese specifies that only Geese's influence can affect the cards and your guardians, you can't give trigger effects to your units. So, crits and stands are like, you can't stand Xeroth Dragon and you can't give a crit to Geese or any of them, but you can still draw cards if you hit a draw or heal if you hit a heal trigger. Now moving on to unit interactions. So, keep in mind, Geese only protects the units themselves. So with all the support we're getting that target circles... <laughs> have fun, Geese. And this is where Geese's, like, all-powerful image starts to wane. Because they recently came out with a lot of support because they were like, okay, we're making Chaos really strong, so we've got to give, like, everything things to target circles so that way, you know, Chaos doesn't become tier zero. And then look what happened. So cards such as Dragonic Over uh, Dragonic Overlord, yeah, Dragonic Overlord, the Destiny, and things like that, target circles. Chaos Breaker Deluge, target circles. So Destiny would be choosing a circle and then retiring the Xerox Dragon on top of it. But instead of putting that in the drop zone, the card would be returned to what's it called? 
the G Zone. That's what it's called. And the same thing goes for Deluge. Deluge forces you to lock from hand, so you can, so he will force you to lock over the Xeroth Dragons, and then the Xeroth Dragons will return to the G Zone. Not that that's a big help, but first of all, I would like to point out that you can combine Deluge's skill with the Chaos Breaker clothes you discard, and then guess what? Those three circles are now down to two. Not those three circles. Those five circles are down to two. So that's still super deadly because it's just a free two damage per turn. But that puts you in like a slightly, slightly better position. Ultimately though, you're going to want to kill Geese like immediately. And then the same thing, I think, this is not listed in the official Q&A, but I think Perfect Performance Ange does the same thing because she targets circles and bounces everything to hand, which would be really weird. Having Xeroth dragons in hand, I think maybe they would also go back to the G-Zone, but I'm not sure. That's something to email Bushy about. Someone email Bushy about it and then post in the comments, like, hey, Ansh does this. Because I'm not gonna do it, I don't play Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> like, looking at the Q&A, it does specifically say that Gs cannot be deleted, and your Xeroths can't be retired, locked, dominated, bound, bounced, put into soul, or bot decked. But at the same time, it's also... It targets circles. So, yeah, there's there's my reason for confusion. Coming up next, however, is the interaction with Dragonic Kaiser Vermilion. Or cards of the same nature. So, things like Brawlers or Exculpate the Blaster. When an attack attacks multiple units, your Xeroth still can't do any. Like, you can't destroy Xeroth with an attack. But that one, I think everybody can kind of figure out. Next up is the case of burn damage, so in the case of the Purge and Dust, it can't happen. Geese, Geese just can't be burned, that's literally it. Like there's just nothing to say about it. <laughs> I already told you that Dust does not decrease the power or grade of units, so it's basically worthless because can't burn, can't decrease grade, can't decrease power, and you're just in there like, well, but. Now let's get into how Mega Colony absolutely fucks over literally every single thing this deck is about. First, Obterandis. Can't call. You just can't call. That's it. And it's not even like an on-hit ability. Like, it just can't call. And then you're just sitting there like, well, can't call the Xeroth Dragon. So no damage is being dealt. And the call is only on place. So like, if you ultimate stride and use next turn, you're just going to sit there and be like, well then. Makes it worth running for Rob Tyrandis, right, Bug Boys? Eh, eh? And the same thing happens with Gridora's skill, but Gridora, you know, can only shut down a column. But that column is essential. Because that, that's the difference between 5 damage and 3 damage. And it fucks you up. Especially since Giza's skill means you can't call anything except Xeroth Dragon, so you're just gonna sit there and be like, well... And I think there's all the ruling questions we really need to go over for now. I'll put the FAQ that Bushy made in the description so you can take a look-sees and see if there's anything, any of your questions that are answered, and of course you can just ask us, and I'm sure we'll be able to cobble together a solution somehow. Now we're gonna move on to my personal thoughts and opinions on the deck. So what do I think about a 30k base vanguard that doesn't return to the G-Zone as well as two guaranteed 25k columns with an auto-win skill? It's alright. I mean, it's not, it's not that good, guys. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. No, that's very good, especially in the right deck. I made this meme about Amaruda in Geese, and oh my god. Cause like, Amaruda, that could li Revelation can guarantee you those triggers. But, like, that's still kind of not, you know, really shocking or shook a thing. Like, okay, you need to hit five triggers. That means from grade one to grade three, you would need to hit every single trigger, and you would need to install for a turn. Because you need five Xeroth Dragons in the Bind Zone. So that means, ride to grade one, you need to be going second, hit a trigger. Ride to grade two, hit a trigger. Ride to grade three, hit two triggers. And then, again, you would have to hit another trigger. Like, let's divvy it up like this. You go first, you hit a trigger when you attack on grade two, you hit a trigger, you hit two triggers on grade three, and then first stride, you hit two trigger. That's great, but your opponent is probably going to have their field set up exactly the way you want it, and you're still not guaranteed all of those triggers. You've got a pretty decent shot at it, 
but you don't have a fantastic shot and you can always stall on grade two or three until then but then you're just playing suboptimally for a card that's pretty decent or let's say you go second and then you swing on your grade one turn hit a trigger swing on your grade two turn hit a trigger then on your grade three turn you stride and hit two triggers that's marginally more optimal but you're still going to wind up striding. You're never gonna be able to use these as your first stride unless you really do like sit there and stall. And then again, you're just playing suboptimally and then you're waiting for your opponent to either surprise you or geese you. And geese probably isn't something you wanna be going into at five damage. Oh, it's a 30k base. Yeah, okay, and? So fucking what? 30k is fucking nothing in Vanguard these days. You know what it is. Gallop is sitting here at 100k columns for borderline free, and you want to be sitting here trying to be pretentious just like, oh, it's 30k base in your opponent's turn. Die. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's literally Exodia, but instead of the five pieces of Exodia, you have to hit five triggers. It's even the same number. And it's going to be infinitely more expensive, because current rumors are saying that the Geese pack is only going to be one per case. The only cheap Xerox Dragon is gonna be Megiddo because it's getting the Bermuda Triangle reprint and that might still be cheaper case, we don't know. <laughs> so it's gonna be a deck nobody's gonna want to play because the G-Zone itself is literally going to cost $700, ignoring the main deck, whatever deck you decide to play. Amaruda. Not to mention Mega Colony literally just complete kills it. It just kills the deck. And you're gonna be playing Neon Geese. So nobody, absolutely fucking nobody, is going to be sitting there just like, Oh wow, he flipped up Neon Geese. Maybe he's not playing Geese. No, no. People are going to rush you down and beat you to fucking hell and do everything they can. And you're playing a suboptimal deck, why? When you could be playing something with actual focus and advantage? Like, oh great, yeah, I've got like 25k lines that you can't really touch. Okay, first of all, Chaos still beats your ass. Second of all, everything else still beats your ass. Third of all, just... It's not that good, guys. It's like Demiurge. On paper, it sounds really, really great, but it's inconsistent, difficult to execute, and ultimately not worth it when other decks can do several different jobs much better. And I'm not saying Geese is bad. Don't all you fucking, like, shit-ass Geese fanatics come after me and just like, how dare you insult our lord and savior Geese? Shut the fuck up. Are you in middle school? No, you're not in middle school. Stop saying that. Anyway, what I'm saying is that Geese is fine. It's okay, but it's literally only for the people who are willing to spend thousands of dollars on these decks and enjoy styling on people. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy styling on people, but it's ultimately not worth it. And if you ask me, Geese is kind of ultimately an anti-consumer practice all around. And he deadass just might not even be that good in actual real practice. Like everybody's freaking out about it, but I just have to look at it and think, like you have to think critically about this. And thinking about it, yeah, sure, it's an auto win condition, but like, so is Glendios, and Glendios still isn't that good. So do I see Geese getting a lot of tournament play? Yes, I do, but only by the same people who buy cases for themselves, and only themselves. And if that's you, if that's your life, man, good luck to you. I'm very happy that you found something to be passionate about and enjoy, but it's, it's just not that great. Sorry to disappoint all y'all. And yeah, that's basically all I have to say on the matter. And it's okay if your opinions are different from mine. I know that like my thoughts can be pretty controversial and your thoughts can be pretty controversial. Let's all be controversial together in the comments section where it's an absolute fucking free for all and I invite you to bash my teeth in. So that's about it for today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you get notifications every time we upload a new video. Our usual upload dates are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but it gets a little iffy sometimes, but we always try to get at least three videos a week. And make sure you tell us what kind of content you guys want to see. We do a lot of Vanguard, a lot of Buddy Fight. I would like to know what other games do you guys take interest in. We're not playing by Schwartz, it's just not happening. Make sure you're on the lookout for next Friday when the Galaxy Stargate booster drops, and I'm going to be doing another one of my super awesome great live streams. I hope you'll be there because everybody else is. So this is Glompy from Team TYC, signing off. Jane.